Hi, I'm James Bernard with Propellerhead Software, and we're presenting to you today Recycle 2.1. Recycle is the software that you would, most people would use when you want to take an audio file and be able to use it at any tempo without affecting the original quality of that audio file. What Recycle will do is it'll take that audio file and analyze peak transients. So, for example, take a drum loop. It'll look at that drum loop and it'll slice it up into a kick, the snare, the hat, the kick, the snare, the hat, so that you have individual slices of all those transients. And then when you change tempo, what it'll do is move those slices further apart, as opposed to stretching and changing the quality of the sound. We also have the ability to fill in the gaps that might exist if you do really large jumps in tempo so that you don't hear any of the spaces between the slices. So here is how you use Recycle. It's a rather simple process. I have a drum loop here that I've loaded up, and quite obviously when you listen to this drum loop, it's not starting on the one and it's not turning around properly. It's not a proper loop. Okay, so I'm going to use Recycle to find my start and end point to this loop and then slice it up so that I can then use it in any music that I want at any tempo. So what we're going to do is in Recycle here, we have a sensitivity slider, and as I move that sensitivity slider up to the right, it starts to generate those hit points or those slices. The first one that you can see that just got generated is my start point. You can listen to it. And I'm going to want to have this loop start there, so I'm going to take my left position located here at the bottom of the screen, click on it, and drag it to that slice. So I now have my start point. And then over here at the end, I know I had two extra kicks, so I'm going to take my right locator and drag that to the beginning of that first kick. So now when I listen to my loop, got my perfect loop. It's a perfect two-bar loop, which I can now process further and recycle. But the first thing I want to do is get rid of any of the audio that's outside of those locators, so I have a perfect loop. And the way we do that is in the process menu up here at the top, I go to crop loop, and what that does is remove everything outside of those left-right locators. So now my loop is perfectly two bars. So as I turn my sensitivity slider, slider up further, you can see that more hit points get generated. And Probably about here or so is, is where I'm going to get all my points. It looks like it. It looks like I've got every slice here generated. You can hear the hats, the individual hits that are there. The only thing is that on this particular file, I can see that there was a double hit generated here. And as I zoom in using the zoom tool, I can see there is another slice there, but I don't want that. And I can remove that slice very quickly by going up to my left-hand side here, just to the left of the sensitivity slider. I have some tools that allow me to change the slices around. This mute tool, the X, allows me to select the slice and mute it, remove it. Now, if I had more slices in here that I wanted to remove, let's say I did a loop and there were actually 30 different hit points that got generated. It was a very noisy loop, but I still want to use it. And in order to get all the proper slices, there were also 30 or so extra slices that were generated. I'm not going to go through and mute and unmute individual slices. What I would do in that instance is I would actually use this lock tool. And when you click on the lock tool, you can actually go slice by slice and decide which slices will always be there. So if I locked in these slices, for example, and then I move my sensitivity slider back down to remove any of the unwanted slices, the slices that are locked stay. So that's how you can use the lock tool to really pick out which slices you're going to keep and which ones are going to go away. All right. You also have this pencil tool here, and what the pencil tool allows you to do is it allows you to write in or draw in your own slices. There may be a loop that you load in that really has a lot of artifacts in it, and you want to use it, so you want to find the slices. You may have to manually go find those slices. You can zoom in and then draw them in. It's a very simple process to do. So now that I've got this loop all sliced up properly, I can now show you exactly why Recycle is the software of choice for using loops and take, taking loops and using them in your music. I'm going to push that preview toggle button here at the top and I'm going to tell it how many bars this loop is. And I know from listening to it that it was a two bar loop. And we can see as soon as I do that, it tells me what the original tempo of this loop was. It's 123.042 BPM. I can take that loop now and change its BPM. I'm going to go down, let's say we'll go down to about 84 or 83. Now we'll take 84. So when I listen to it now, you're going to hear something that I'm going to, that I'm going to show you that stretch percentage and how that fills in the gaps. So you can hear the slices there because we did a, quite a drastic change in tempo. But if I take this stretch percentage knob here and turn it all the way up, now you're not going to hear those slices. 
Okay, so that allows you to use this drum loop at a quite a drastic change in tempo here. I went almost 40 BPM down from the original loop, and I'm not hearing any artifacts or any weirdness. The snare is still crisp and tight, the kick is still punchy, everything's still the way it was. So now I can take this loop and I'm going to save it down to the desktop. So I now can use it in Reason. I can take this drum loop and use it in my own music. I can also do the same process. It doesn't have to just be drum loops. Recycle will work for basically any audio loop that you have. So if you have a vocal part and you want to slice it up, you have a bass line, you want to slice it up. A lot of times what I do in my music is I play bass guitar. So what I'll do is I'll record myself playing a bass line and then I'll take it into Recycle and take it and slice it up. And then I could use it in any song at any tempo. So in that way I can actually add a live bass guitar to Reason and actually be able to use it in any tempo I want. So here I've got uh, another musical passage. Okay, and I want to take this and slice this up to be able to use this. So as soon as I turn my sensitivity slider up, this one's fairly defined as far as where the start points are for each one of these hits. So it's a pretty simple slice and recycle. And now again, I'm going to go to my preview toggle Tell it the bars, turn my stretch percentage up, and bring my tempo down. We also have other things in Recycle 2.1 which allow you to shape the sound. We have a, the envelope, transient shaper, and EQ effects. The envelope allows you to do things like give it a bit of a backwards feel. So if I turn the attack up, kind of feels like you're fading into the sound. So that can kind of take out some of the attack transients in the sound. We can go to the transient shaper and you can add, apply something like compression or limiting to really take the sound and change it. You can also take the EQ and maybe filter out or boost certain frequencies that you want. And then once you do that, you save that file down and it's been processed and it's ready to use in Reason. So I'm going to do that with this as well. We're going to save this to the desktop. Okay, and now we'll open up Reason. And I'm going to create a new song here. And what I'm going to do in this song is just use two Rex players, two Dr. Rex loop players. I've got one there and another one. And I'm going to go find those loops. There's my drum loop. And then my musical passage. Okay, so these are now both in Reason, and they're going to play at whatever tempo Reason is set to. Regardless of what I save them at, they're going to play at the tempo of Reason. So I want to put them to the track. I'm going to go with that drum loop first. Now, when Recycle slices it up, it does more than just slice it up into individual parts. It also extracts the groove from that file so that you keep the same feel. For example, with this live drum loop, it keeps the exact same feel of that drum loop. It saves it as a MIDI file. And then when you use this two track button on the Dr. Rex player, it takes that groove and puts it down to a track as MIDI information. I'm going to do that for both of these. So now when I press play, let me bring the volume up a bit here. You can hear that it's playing back at the tempo of the Reason song. So I'm going to change that and bring that down to 93. So very quickly, I've got those loops that I just put into Recycle, and I'm able to start using them in my music. Let's say I wanted to change the whole feel of that. I could take these files that I had that were recorded with a different feel and give them an extreme shuffle. Let's say they're a little too rigid for me. I can go into Shuffle, select those tracks, hit the shuffle percentage, because now they exist as MIDI information, and now I've got a real shuffled feel. Okay, so very quickly you're able to take a file that you've put into Recycle and use it in your music. And I've actually got a little demo song here. It's a little eight bar thing. And it's actually using all Recycle files. And I've also done some things with Transpose because when you load a Recycle file into the Dr. Rex loop player, you can also transpose it. And you could automate that. So let's say I wanted to do a chord change or modulation in the song. I can record that transposition in. So everything that you're hearing here save from the drums because those I programmed everything else is a recycled file so there's 
the transposition there, chorded that in to go down in the key. Okay, so that's how Recycle 2.1 can really open up your musical experience with Reason. When you use Recycle, you really have a whole other palette of sounds that you could add when you're using Reason to create your music. That's Recycle 2.1.